Welcome to Seminar 5 in the Nesting Pairs series. We're going to be looking at three topics in this seminar. Support cues, full suit forcing and Roman keycard blackwood. So let's get underway and look at the first of those topics, support cues. What are support cues? Well, they're a way of showing support for your partner when there has been an overcall by the opponents. Why are they a good idea? Well, you're going to use the opponent's interference to show your partner your correct support and strength and at the same time interfere with the opponent's bidding. How does it work? Imagine your partner has opened the bidding one heart. Your opponent makes an overcall of two clubs. Here comes your support cue. You bid three clubs. You're saying to your partner that you're strong, that you've got an invitational hand and good heart support. So support cues are a strong raise in your partner's suit. You're saying you're fine at the three heart level and if you've got any more in the tank, bid to game. Your three club bid here can't be a Bergen raise because you haven't been able to make a jump bid. Conversely, if you support your partner's suit, you're suggesting that you are weak. So in the same auction where your partner opens one heart, the opponents overcall two clubs. Now if rather than using that support cue, you choose to bid hearts and bid two hearts, you're saying that you've got support for hearts, but you're weak in points. On this auction, the three diamond and three heart Bergen bids are still available if you have four card support because you are able to jump in the bidding over that overcall. So the key to remembering support cues is that a cue bid is strong, whereas bidding the suit is weak. Let's have a look at the support cue in action. Here, the bidding is opened one spade. An overcall comes in of two clubs. With the south hand, you have good support for the spades. You know that you're always going to go to game. But use your support cue and bid three clubs. Bid the opponent's overcalled suit. Now you get a chance to see from your partner how strong their hand is with their subsequent bid. With North's hand, they're going to bid three spades. Now you know that your partner has a minimal hand, you're going to go to four spades to game. You can use this same cue bid method to show your support for your partner's overcall. These are called unassuming cue bids. Here are some examples. Imagine the opponents have opened the bidding one club and your partner makes an overcall of one heart. You've now got an option on your bid if you can support the hearts. If you bid two hearts, you're saying, partner, I'm quite weak, but I've got heart support for your overcall. If you bid two clubs and make a cue bid of the opponent's suit, you're saying to your partner, I've actually got good support for those hearts and a good hand, how strong was that overcall? You then watch and see what your partner's response is. If your partner goes two hearts, they're saying, well, you wouldn't believe how weak that overcall was. If they bid three hearts, they're saying, well, actually it was a sound overcall and I've got opening points here and a good hand. And if they go four hearts, they're saying, well, with your support, I've got good enough for game. And there's a clever little extra you can use with your unassuming cue bids. So where the opponents bid two suits, you have the option of showing to your partner whether you have three card or four card support. Here's how it works. Here in this auction, the opponents have opened the bidding one club. Your partner makes an overcall of one heart and the opponents now bid one spade. Well, you can now bid either clubs or spades to make your support cue. So if you choose the first bid suit, the clubs, 
You can have an agreement with your partner that says, I've got good support for your hearts. How strong was that overcall? And my support is three cards in length. But if you choose to cue the spade suit, the second suit, you're saying to your partner, I've got good support for your overcall. How strong was that overcall of one heart? But I'm telling you now that I've got four cards support for you. So a bit of the first opponent's suit is three card support and a bit of the second opponent's suit is four card support. Another example of where support cues are very useful are in the situation where you're not able because of Bergen to make one of your bids but you want to show support to your partner for their suit. Imagine your partner has opened the bid in one spade and the opponents intervene with two diamonds. You're holding four spades and 16 points. With Bergen, you'd be wanting to bid two no trumps, but now you can't because you cannot make a jump bid because of the interference. So instead, Q bid the opponent's suit, bid three diamonds, saying to your partner, you've got strong support for the spades and you're comfortable at the three level, and then see what your partner rebids. You're going to get another bid and you're always going to game. If your partner bids three spades, you know they've got a bare minimum and little shape, so sign off in game with four spades. But if your partner is able to jump to four spades with your cubid, then you know that your partner's got more than a bare minimum. Perhaps now's the time to consider slam. The next topic in this seminar is all about bidding slams. It's having a look at a new ace asking system called Roman Keycard Blackwood. Roman Keycard involves giving information about five key cards. The key cards are the four aces and the king of the trump suit. If there's been no trump suit bid or implied, then answer with the king of the last genuine suit that has been bid. And if no suit at all has been bid, well answer in spades. So the bid of four no trumps asks the question about key cards, and how are you going to answer? We are going to need to remember 14, 30, two without, two with. And what that means is you hold 14, one or four of the five key cards. 30, three or zero of the five key cards. Two of the key cards without the queen of the trump suit. Two of the key cards with the queen of the trump suit. So when you're answering using Roman keycard, you're able to give much more information to your partner about not just the four aces, but also the king of the trump suit and sometimes the queen. So those answers to four no trumps are five clubs saying one or four key cards held, five diamonds, three or zero key cards held, five hearts, two key cards without the queen of trumps, five spades, two key cards with the Queen of Trumps, and lastly, five no trumps, which means all five key cards, but that's pretty rare. So with the answer you receive, if you are then weighing up whether to be in a slam or a grand slam, then you'll use your king asking, which is five no trumps. Now in the answers that you give, you're going to ignore the king of trumps because you've already answered that. So from the remaining three, your answers will be six clubs are zero, six diamonds, one king, six hearts, two kings, six spades, three kings. Have a look at these hands with Roman keycard in action. Here, South has opened the bidding one heart. With 19 points, North always knows that the partnership is going to at least game, if not slam. But rather than support the heart suit, as North only has three cards support, North is going to make that fake bid of two clubs. So bidding another suit first, which is forcing upon partner and saying, describe your hand more. With North's promise 10 high card points, South is tempted to go straight to three no trumps on the basis that three no trumps makes half the time with 24 points. 
but with no fit seen by the South Hand as yet, South decides to bid two no trumps. North now knows the shape of South's hand and the point count of 12 to 14. North is hopeful of slam, preferably in no trumps, so starts roaming keycarding. North bids for no trumps. The last genuine suit bid, as far as South is concerned, is clubs, and so South answers in clubs. Holding one keycard, South bids five clubs. North decides that as the partnership holds all five key cards and a five card suit known for extra length, to try for six no trumps. When you get the answer to that four no trump key card inquiry of either five clubs or five diamonds, you don't know about the queen of trumps. You only learn about the Queen when your partner happens to hold two of the key cards. But there is a way of Queen asking when you get those responses of five clubs or five diamonds. The way to use the Queen ask is by bidding the next suit up. This is only safe when the trump suit is firmly agreed between you or has been implied. The way it works is the next suit up is bid inquiring about the Queen of the trump suit and you give the answer of the very next suit up to say you don't hold that queen and you jump a suit to show you do hold the queen. Let's have a look at this in an example. Here the auction has opened one heart with the response of two no trump, so a Bergen raise and there is an implied fit in hearts. Now the opener bids for no trump Roman key card and receives the answer, five clubs, one or four key cards. In this auction, everyone knows that hearts are the trump suit. So now when the opener bids five diamonds, this is a queen ask about the queen of hearts. If the answer is five hearts, it denies the queen of hearts is held. But if the answer is five spades, then it confirms the Queen of Hearts is held. One of the big advantages of using 1430 is the ability to Queen ask when Hearts is the trump suit. Look at this example. Imagine you're holding 16 high card points and your partner opens one no trump showing 15 to 18. You use two clubs, puppet stamen, and receive the answer three diamonds. So you now know your partner is at maximum 17 or 18 and is holding one or two four card suits. You bid three hearts, confirming to your partner that you hold four spades and you may also be holding four hearts. Your partner bids four spades, confirming the spade fit and 17 to 18 points. So you now go into using Roman keycard and bid for no trumps. Imagine your partner responds five diamonds. They're telling you they have three or zero keycards. Spades is the agreed trump suit. So if you now bid five hearts, that is a queen ask, asking about the queen of spades. If your partner replies five spades, they're denying that they hold the queen of spades. But if they answer five no trumps, they're confirming they do hold the queen of spades. When you are looking for slams, remember the minor suit slams are the most underbid. To get to a game in a minor, you're needing 27 or 28 points, so you don't need that much more to be in a minor slam. So always consider that as an option. Of course, if you're in a pairs competition, if you're finding you can make slam in a suit, always consider no trumps because a slam in no trumps is going to give you those extra points and in pairs, potentially that top board. New Zealand Bridge are no longer teaching Gerber to beginners. So in the Nesting Pairs series, I'm asking you to give away your comfort blanket. You should only be using Gerber now when the bidding has gone one no trump and then the Gerber bid of four clubs comes in. 
or two no trumps and again four clubs comes in. There can be no mistake about what that means, but use the same key card style answers. So from that four club bid, answer 14, 30, two without the queen, two with the queen. And as there's been no suit mentioned at all, simply answer in spades so that you give your partner some information about at least the boss suit. It really is much easier and less of a memory drain if you use the same answers for all of your ace asking systems. So try 1430 and see how you go. We're now going to move on to the last topic, which is false suit forcing. This is a way of finding game in no trumps. And to start using false suit forcing, if you're not using it already, we're going to start quite simply. And when you use it, you're going to promise your partner that you've got at least 10 high card points. Imagine the auction has gone one heart, you've responded one spade, and your partner has now gone two clubs. You're the responder and you hold game points. What you really want to know is whether between the two of you, there's a hold in diamonds so that you can go to no trumps. If you have a stopper in diamonds yourself, it's easy. You'll just bid three no trumps. But supposing you don't, this is where you use fourth suit forcing and you will bid two diamonds. This is an alertable bid. You're bidding the fourth suit and you're not promising length in the suit. But what you're saying to your partner is, I'd like to be in no trumps. If you've got a stopper in the diamonds, bid no trumps. Look at this auction. Here, if your partner's opened one heart, you've bid one spade, your partner rebids two clubs. You now bid two diamonds, which your partner will alert. If your partner goes to no trumps, what they're saying to you is that they have got a stopper in the diamonds and it's up to you. You can either leave the auction at two no trumps by passing or go to game if you know there are game points. But your partner's told you that they can hold the diamonds. Look at this auction. Your partner's opened one heart and you've responded two clubs. Your partner now bids two diamonds and you bid two spades, full suit forcing, which your partner will alert. Your partner now bids three no trumps. Your partner's telling you that they've got a stopper in the spades and with your promise 10 points, there's enough for game and go straight there. In this auction, your partner's opened one heart and you bid one spade. Your partner's rebid is two clubs. You now bid two diamonds, which your partner alerts for suit forcing, asking for a hold in the diamonds. Here, your partner has bid two spades. So your partner is telling you that they don't have a stopper in the diamonds, but they do hold three spades. Have a look at this hand. Here, North has opened the bidding one club. South responds one heart. North now bids one spade. South now uses fourth suit forcing and bids two diamonds. North bids two no trumps, confirming they hold a stopper in diamonds and can help with that suit. South now passes, but the partnership have been able to find the best spot of no trumps to gain the best score. The one time that fourth suit forcing does not apply is where all the bids are at the one level. So in an auction that goes one club, one diamond, one heart, one spade. That one spade bid is not fourth suit forcing. It is a genuine four card spade suit and still trying to find a fit at the one level of bidding. But if the auction goes one club, one diamond, one heart, two spades, that is fourth suit forcing. A forcing bid which you must answer and it's asking about a stopper in spades to bid no trumps. You can also ask for help in a suit where the opponents have interfered in the auction, but where you might like to be in no trumps. For example, here, if your partner opens the bidding one heart, the opponents bid one spade, you bid two clubs, and then the opponents trying to interfere bid two spades. Your partner is able to rebid three diamonds, and then there's a pass. 
Well, if you've got game points, you can bid three spades, asking your partner to bid three no trumps if they've got half a hold on the spade suit themselves. You really need half a hold yourself to be asking that question once the opponents have interfered. What does half a hold look like? Well, queen rag rag, jack rag in the hope that your partner's promise half a hold themselves is going to be enough in combination with your jack to hold the suit. Something that might amount to a stopper so that you can be in no trumps. But beware of using it with less than 10 points. Have a look at this example. Here you can see the east hand and west has opened the bidding one heart. Here is east, you've got two five card suits so you're going to respond one spade. Now your partner rebids two clubs. Well yes, you have got a five card diamond suit as well but you must bid two hearts. Give simple preference. You haven't got the 10 high card points that you would be promising if you use full suit forcing. So don't mention your second suit of diamonds and simply choose between your partner's two suits. A seven card fit is not the end of the world. Far better you are there than promising your partner points that you do not hold. Well, that's the end of this seminar. I hope you're going to enjoy your practice session. All of the seminar notes, the hands and the bidding information to go on the back of the boards, they're all on the Cambridge Bridge Club website. Just a little warning about the next seminar coming up, Seminar 6. It's going to cover the full multi-two diamonds, so we can strong options and Muderberg 2s. Currently in New Zealand, you can't use those bids at junior tournaments, they're banned. It's not an easy topic, and so if you're still struggling a little to get your head around the strong multi-two diamond and the weak twos with August, then I'd suggest for now you skip 7R6, but come back and join me in Seminar 7, when we're going to be looking at bidding slams on a shoestring. Good luck. Happy bridging.